Okay, if you want to start us off. Uh, you're muted. You're, you're on mute. Hello. There we go. Hear me? Yep. Mm -hmm. So my name is Mitchell Kwanek. I'm working for National University Kiev Mahila Academy. And uh, Kiev Mahila Academy is the very old, the, large, the oldest university in, in Ukraine. However, it's, it's, it's pretty small. It's like, it's like classical university. We have PR uh, program for bachelors and for masters and uh, for like 10 years or so. Uh, I am studying mostly crisis communication, but also I have some interest in, in, in uh, um, organization of PR departments, PR agencies, like organizational issues of these PR processes. And uh, I came to the university from the practical field of uh, communications. I worked as a public relations officer for United Nations, for World Bank, and also was head of PR agency before. Today, we will talk about wartime communication strategies of Ukrainian public companies. May I switch to my presentation? So, so, mm -hmm. Maybe we'll start with some context. This building is uh, the nine-story nine building in the residential area of Dnipro, one of the largest cities of Ukraine. It was hit by rocket attack by Russians on January. Five people were killed there, 39 injured, and this is pretty, uh, pretty normal now for Ukrainian cities to have such buildings. Wow. So from the very, from the, so may, uh, I would like to start with some context. I, I know that you know that uh, uh, that you are aware about uh, Russian invasion to Ukraine and uh, and this, we have a war and so on. But maybe I will just make some uh, context for this uh, how state uh, companies are communicated now, uh, just to give you some some information to understand uh, the volume of the problems they, they faced, yes? So from the first day of the war, uh, Russians start to target infrastructure of, of the country. Of course, uh, they started with uh, hitting uh, bridges, military bases, uh, airfields, such kind of issues. Uh, however, however, uh, as far as the strikes were very intensified, so they started to hit uh, civil infrastructure as well. Here you see the photo of uh, Kharkiv metro station where people, and people are still use metro stations as a shelter when there are uh, airstrikes in those cities, of course, where we have a metro. This is Kharkiv, Kharkiv second largest city of Ukraine, the city with population of two, Two million inhabitants. For now, a quarter of the city doesn't exist. But uh, although Russia had had been carrying out strikes of Ukrainian infrastructure facilities from the first days of, of the of the uh, war of the large war, the most intensive like massive attacks to Ukrainian critical infrastructure, they started uh, in the early October. So just before the winter season, uh, the idea of Russian, I don't know, administration of Russian governance, Russian uh, government was to hit the energy facilities uh, of the Ukraine, like to frozen the the country, we had uh, a lot of uh, examples where the Russian officials, uh, Russian media, uh, had made some statements that we will uh, hit all energy infrastructure and uh, Ukraine will be will came into the darkness. 
uh, into the coldness and so on. So since uh, October 22, Russians made a 10 massive attacks using cruise missiles, uh, uh, drone attacks and so on, trying to uh, hit the uh, energy power, power stations to hit uh, different, um, I'll say, communication issues, uh, and of course, to uh, get uh, us into the, into the darkness. In that time, President Zelensky made one of his uh, prominent speech, which, which called, without you. So it was a direct statement to Russians, to Russian government, to Russian people, that uh, you cannot, you know, before that, um, before October, it was some illusion that it, it was possible to somehow to negotiate, somehow to find some agreement. And if you remember, for, for someone who are like a, in, uh, is interested in, in uh, the situation, you maybe remember that it was some negotiations in Istanbul, and it was uh, Ukrainian delegation, Russian delegation, they, uh, they met each other, they have some, some discussions and so on. So it was the illusion that maybe it is possible somehow to, to find some solution, to somehow, or maybe to come back to the situation which was, um, which was um, until uh, before, uh february 2022 20, yes but after october it was absolutely clear that uh, we cannot find the agreement and that's why this zelensky speech uh, started this uh, how to say movement so-called movement we can call it like a, a wave of uh, different uh like a as a, as a communication campaign, we can say, but it was uh, supported not only by government, but by, but by public as well, which called without you, or in Ukrainian, bez vas, you, you see. So, uh, cold, tongue, darkness, so are not as scary, as deadly for us as your friendship and brother. Yes. And that was very powerful message. And actually that changed the attitude, you know, the people started and started to understand that there is no peaceful solution. There is no possibility to negotiate with Russian government until Putin is uh, stay as a as a president of Russian Federation. Because that was absolutely clear that when the, the when the air forces of Russian Federation target uh, civil objects, peaceful peaceful uh, infrastructure. So just look at this map. This map was uh, was done by NASA. I don't know, is it uh, clear to, to see? But uh, this is uh, blackouts plunge Ukraine into darkness after massive Russian missile strikes. You see that. Uh, Ukraine was absolutely in darkness and all other countries around it is, is, uh, is uh, lighted. So this how the uh, streets of Kiev was looked like uh, after these strikes. So everything was cut. As you might see, this in the, in the center, the photo is the uh, the, the most central uh, street of Kiev, of the capital of, of Ukraine. So in the the uh, the this is the the square of independence, the, the central square of, uh, this is called Maidan, by the way, this is not a square. It's, it's Maidan, Maidan where all revolutions and all the stuff were, were held. So as you see that most lights are from cars. So, uh, Stalin, which was uh, done by, by, by Russians, uh, temporary split the power generation system. And uh, that, that's why the authorities, uh, they started to uh, suspend operations of all the units 
uh, and this deprived two sorts of Ukrainians uh, of access to electricity and not only to electricity because a lot of uh, supply is also depends on electricity. For example, my personal building where I'm living, uh, we didn't have not only electricity, but we didn't have water supply. We didn't have our elevators didn't work. Nothing was working. You know, we had to. so for for first days after, after this uh, series of these attacks, we had a uh, uh, we, we 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 have cases where we didn't have uh, electricity for thirty six uh, hours uh, as a as a time. Yes. So as I say, that uh, the goal was to cut Ukrainians and to move, to press Ukrainians uh, uh, for like, um, how say, nudge, nudge Ukrainians to press on, 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 on their government, to, to stop the war, to, to, to show to, to Zelensky and to government that this is uh, inappropriate, let's sign the peace treaty with Russia as, as, as soon as possible. But that didn't happen. For example, December 22, we have here a very solid uh, institute of um, you know, calls uh, Kiev. This is very uh, good uh, and quality sociology institution. They made a poll on December 22. That was like one month after these uh, massive attacks. And uh, According to that poll, 85% of uh, respondents, it, it, it was all Ukrainian poll with a uh, correct uh, sample. So 85% of survey uh, respondents were in favor of in case the former Ukrainian territories oh. will be liberated. That was very interesting because, as you see, that they uh, spent a lot of rockets, they spent a lot of money for for these attacks, but they didn't reach their target. Actually, well, all, all they reached, they reached uh, civil uh, civil uh, infrastructure. For example, um, we had recently the report from deputy chairperson of Verkhovna Rada. Verkhovna Rada is Parliament of Ukraine. Olena, Miss Olena Kondratyuk. She stated, you see, the damage or destroyed residential buildings, uh, 158,000. Educational facilities, meaning schools, universities, colleges, and kindergartens, and so on, 1,000. Uh, one and a, uh, one and a half thousand uh, destruction of uh, medical facilities, hospitals, uh, medical points, and so on, almost a, a thousand. And these strikes still continue. You see, this is uh, recent uh, photos. Uh, then is uh, Ukrainian port city of Odessa uh, had now. Uh, Odessa is under attack. Uh, Odessa is large seaport and and again one of the largest cities in Ukraine with more than one 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 million inhabitants. Uh, now they are trying to hit the seaport because this uh, port is the key port for uh, for uh, sending the grain from Ukraine to other countries. And uh, just recently, a head of press office of um, South, uh, I'll say South part of Ukrainian army. She made the interview for uh, F AFP, France Press Agency. So, and about the uh, needs of anti missiles uh, equipment, anti rocket equipment. And she said, Yes, of course, if uh, we will not be provided with this equipment, we will not need it to secure our ports after two, two months, because after two months, we will not have CBC. Uh, they are pretty, uh, pretty, pretty successful. And another two photos is from the Lviv, it's Western Ukraine. As you see, this is residential house. Uh, this is historical building. 
from the 19th century or beginning of 20th century. So there we had also sorry people injured and 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 three three people were killed. So why communications of public companies is, is so important in Russia? So I just think uh, what how to to how to explain the necessity of communication from public companies. The issue that uh, we uh, in Ukraine is as a post post communist country, post Soviet country, we have a lot of uh, state monopolies in, in in different areas, and usually the, that monopoly is in uh, the some key key sectors where the where the activity of such monopolies affects. Uh, life, uh, safety, uh, interest of uh, thousands and thousands of people. Um, I'm talking about transportation sector, energy sector, water supply, ba even banking and postal service. Post in banking and in postal, of course, they have a, a lot of private competitors, but uh, for example, postal se service, Ukrposhta, you see Ukrainian post. Uh, they are not monopolies because we have a uh, very successful, uh, successful uh, private uh, company called Nova Post, New Post. But they are, I mean, state-owned company. State company is much larger. Uh, it, it covers the whole territory, and usually it uh, serves uh, uh, people with uh, low salaries, uh, pensioners, and so on. The same is with banking, for example. Private bank, uh, with, even it calls private bank, private bank, yes, but it is state-owned. Uh, it's a story behind this, So, but uh, I will not uh, use time for this. But private bank is state, uh, and for example, it uh, delivers uh, pensions to, to pensioners, you know. That's why it, it is so important. Uh, a lot of uh, state uh, and budget uh, servants, and not on the state. For example, uh, we in our university we 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 get the salaries through private banks. You no, know? so it's uh, it has a lot of coverage. Plus, these large state-owned companies are employers. And they're employers of tens of thousands of people. For example, we will talk uh, just now about Ukrzaliznice, it's Ukrainian railways. So they have 120,000 employees. In some in some regions, especially in, in small towns, in um, in villages, and so on, they they might be only one employee in this ter territory, especially Ukrzaliznice, for example. So Russians. Since the onset of the invasion, they want to, they have a strategy to target infrastructure and they want to spread panic, create chaos. Uh, and honestly, if, if, if to be absolutely honest, uh, a lot of people were afraid about such kind of panic. I, I personally was, you know, not 100% sure that it will be as a panic and, and, and chaos, but but I was I was afraid about this this possibility. So, uh, in order that that's why I thought that it's very important to 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 research this and to somehow to document because you know uh, from one side. We understand that there is, there is real life and 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 there is a, some 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 real deeds that these energy companies, or transport companies, or banking companies uh, uh, execute. But from other side, it is very important to understand what do they communicate to prevent chaos. What do they communicate to assist people? Uh, what to do? When to do? how to do it better and so on. That's why I decided to, to research this issue. Uh, I did a content analysis. I'm, I'm conducting this con content uh, analysis from the beginning of the war uh, with uh, assistance from some of my students. They uh, assisted me to, to collect the information. So we are 
watching the social media, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, Twitter, Telegram, those that are most popular in Ukraine, of course. We are also looking for the publication in the uh, corporate websites. Uh, what is interesting, by the way, during wartime, that corporate web website became much more popular than they were before this uh, great war. And of course, we, we are watching interviews of managers uh, of the state-owned uh, uh, enterprises or public. Uh, sorry, I'm, I'm using, you know, state-owned company and, and uh, public company as a synonyms now. I, I, I understand that there is some, some differences, but, but just for, to make it easier, I'm using this as synonyms. And also I conducted uh, semi-structured in-depth interviews with PR and communications professionals from public and business sector, those Ukrainian uh, PR professionals uh, that are uh, living in uh, Ukraine. So they, they were not uh, those who stayed in Ukraine and they uh, may uh, had the possibility to watch and um, watch this communication by their uh, eyes. And as, you, as we all, all know that uh, the uh, colleagues are usually the, the best critics for, for, for professionals because they can see the, what, what was uh, useful, what was not useful and so on. So I interviewed 36 respondents uh, on May and June this year. So as I will say that war was a, a very serious trigger. And of, of course, at the beginning, from the beginning of this full scale invasion, uh, different public uh, companies communicated uh, in, in different way. It was, uh, it, it depends on uh, the scope of their work, on their sector, on uh, actually challenges they faced. Uh, what my favorite stories of this state owned companies is uh, uh, our Ukrainian railways, it calls Ukrzaliznitsya, because I'm well familiar with, with this company. Uh, it was very interesting that one year before the war, on 20, I was uh, as an independent, uh, as an independent consultant, I was uh, hired to conduct the communication audit of this company. So I was very familiar with their communication capacity, who, who they are, who are in their communication team. I, I, I was familiar with their real, they had a real problems with communication. We will, we will talk about, about it later. And I think this story with Zuker Zaliznitsa was Start show the the real uh, breakthrough. How the company, when they need, when they want, and when they they are in need, what they can achieve in very very short term. So first of all, very interesting that uh, Ukur Zaliznitsa was the first state uh, company which was uh, challenged by the, the war conditions. As I told, the, from the first day, actually the war started with airstrikes. The war started uh, on the, the, uh, the, at the night and it was started with airstrikes where the Russian, uh, Russian air forces started to, sh uh, uh, to bomb, to, to, to send uh, rockets and bombs uh, to the major uh, uh, transport and uh, military infrastructure and energy infrastructure of Ukraine. Uh, city of Kharkiv, the second largest city of Ukraine, uh, is located 40 kilometers from Russian border. So, and uh, a lot of uh, people decided to evacuate from, from Kharkiv because Kharkiv was very heavily bombed. Moreover, Russian troops came practically to the border of the city 
and they started to shell them with artillery, which became a extreme damage to the, to the city. As I already said, currently one quarter of, of, of Kharkiv uh, doesn't exist. So as you see on the photos, these are uh, people who wanted to evacuate from Kharkiv and from other cities as well. Um, they had a lock of trains. That's why people were, uh, were uh, how they forced to sleep in the in these rows in the, in the in the train cars because there were not enough space for them to to, to bring them. They, so that was evacuation trains, which was managed by by Ukrzelizniya. And honestly, from from the first sight, it looked like a, a collapse. And honestly, a lot of people, especially myself, uh, we thought that. It, might be simply uh, led to the corruption of the of the whole infrastructure. That's that's really Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian railways adopted a very engaging and creative communication strategy. So they decided to focus their on four areas, safety, awareness, motivation, recognition, support, and look at toward the future. Everything is according to, you know, the theory. Even, even those people, I know them per personally, are, are not very well aware with the theory. Uh, it's, it's my joke, but, um, but there are some, some issues about it. So, Ukrzelizniya, uh, uh, started with safety. They understood that Ukrzelizniya, like a leading carrier during the war, they need to. Uh, this is a very interesting. Uh, there is an, another story which lays in the in the, in the structure of the Ukrainian language. Zaliznitsya, Zaliznitsya means a railway. But if you see railway, it's uh, like English word railway. You you don't have the the word the word iron here, yes. But in Ukrainian, zaliznitsa is actually iron way, you know. So uh, from other side, the uh, word iron means for sure in in slang in Ukrainian. So if you say, "Will you do this?" and I say, "Ironly." Like Zalizno, I will do it for sure, 100% that I will do it. Yes. So they, in their communication, use this word very, uh, very often. For example, iron evacuation. From one side, it looks that we will evacuate you for sure. Yes. From other side, it's we will evacuate you by railway. You know, so it's like, or oh, iron nerves. Yes. Uh, this is that we are, we have a cold nerves, we know what to do, we are reliable, we will, we will bring you, uh, we will bring you yourself, and we will bring goods for you, we will bring uh, necessary supply to the army, we will bring necessary supply to internally displaced people, and so on. Uh, so this is one direction of the other communicate uh, other direction is motivation and recognition again they use uh, very uh, broadly these ideas of iron yes so you have you, a lot of people as i say 120,000 employees of, of, of ukrainian railways a lot of people went as a volunteers to the army and then they introduced campaign called Iron Heroes. So heroes from Zaliznice, from Iron Way, yes. Uh, iron men in the armed forces. Then, uh, of course, uh, they had some losses. Some, some people were killed during the war. 
that's why they started the campaign called Iron Man in Heaven. So people from Ukrzaliznitsia, Iron People, Iron Man from Heaven. So they that uh, campaign holds the memory of, of this uh, old uh, heroes. Mm -hmm. Another direction is care and support. So as a very large company, like a very large public company, they had they have a lot of different possibilities to assist. That's why that's why they initiated campaigns like Iron Family. Showcasing the company's commitment to the well being and welfare of its employees and other members of Ukrainian society. For example, this is uh, photos made uh, in, uh, they had a special project, they call it Iron Towns. They, they uh, used their cars. Uh, as a temporary shelters for people who, who lost their homes. Especially it was uh, established in, in Kyiv Oblast. If you remember, maybe you heard about Bucha, uh, Bucha tragedy where a lot of people were killed. Uh, a lot of, uh, that, that town was practically uh, ruined and a lot of people lost their homes. They have no, no, nowhere to go. So Ukrzaliznitsia established such shelter, you know, they, they started even, even to do it properly. They, they organize uh, baths, uh, water supply, even some I'll say, areas to where they can uh, communicate, read, watch TV and so on. Now they is, uh, but anyway, they understood that even even in the framework of the war, in the conditions of in the war conditions, they should think about future. Uh, they need from one side develop their their company, and they uh, should give some kind of optimism and some kind of hope to to the. To their passengers, they need to show that that the company are still working and 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 develop itself. So as you see, there is some statistic you you maybe don't, uh, but I will trans translate. Yes, Ukrzaliznitsia. For example, they gave some 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 statistical information about their their activity during the uh, war times. For example, they evacuate three and a half millions of, of uh, Ukrainians uh, by their trains. Uh, here on, on the center, they establish a, a, they call safety corridors where, where the person, for example, who is living in, um, in a city with this, uh, in the uh, front line or in very, very, uh, near is uh, near to the front line, so he or she can evacuate and evacuate his family or her family, and so on. So <clears throat> they also introduced different uh, means of communication. They they start they started to use dashboards and and uh, they actively started to work with social media. So this this is really now uh, they really improved their communications. Uh, media, Forbes UA, uh, my, my favorite quote about, about the symbol of bad service in peacetime and the savior of millions of civilians in wartime. The Russian invasion transformed the state-owned Ukrzaliznitsia within. That's absolute, this, this is absolutely true. I, 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 I support this, uh, uh, this opinion by 100 percent as 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 i told you i did the communication audit in, uh, and in the end of december i made the uh presentation to Kozalizneta board about their communication uh, communication uh, department you know usually if you are independent uh, consultant you 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 can criticize the your client of course yes but uh, sometimes you need to be more diplomatic i don't know w will you support my opinion about it? but 
if you if you want to be hired next time as well. That's why you are right. In the company has a very high communication potential, but it is recommended to better organize its communication system. If to this is real slide, I, I use it. This is the slide I used in 21. But behind this, I would say that the communication people in Ukrazaliznitsia had the lowest salaries in the sector. You know, so they 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 work for practically nothing. When when I started, they didn't have a long long term contracts. So, for example, everyone might be uh, fired and after months, for example. Uh, every press release they issued, and they issued two press releases per day because you know the the company is enormous, very large, huge, uh, covers all the country, has uh, different. Um, different uh, directions for example they have pass they they have passenger uh, passengers uh, transportation they have uh, uh, different uh, commercial transportations uh, they have uh, uh, repairment uh, facilities uh, they have uh, railway stations and so on so they have a lot of press releases so head of board look every press release before it was it, it it is publicized you know so that uh, that was enormous bureaucracy heads of departments were afraid to give interviews to journalists journalists uh, um, during this communication audit i, I made the um, interviews with journalists uh, and they were claiming that it was very difficult to work with business. So that's why that's and of course uh, they had enormous problems with uh, with employees because, as I say, one hundred twenty thousand, but they have very low salaries, and they didn't they didn't understand that the management of company hears them. That was a serious problem. Uh, problem. That's why I wrote that, uh, and and they and also employees and not only employees, ec uh, external audiences as well. They were not sure that Ukrazaliznitsia had a correct uh, strategy about using communication channels. That's why I wrote that, that it is advised to study the target audiences, the information needs, and communication channel channels which they use and which they trust. And now we can see for now, after Russian invasion, so they started to use practically a very broad range of communication channels. You know, as before, uh, before this Russian invasion, they used to mostly corporate sites. They have several groups in Facebook. <clears throat> they have, uh, we have uh, Viber. I don't know, do you know? Viber, it looks like Telegram. Uh, so they had a chatbot there, and that's practically the all. <clears throat> what PR and communication professionals, which I say, what do they think? Uh, what is their, so I put them the question, what is your overall evaluation of the communications of state-owned companies with their publics after Russian invasion? As you see, uh, nobody, nobody rated the communication efforts as ineffective. This is very interesting, you know. So everyone understand that at least uh, it was some sort of effectiveness. Uh, and only nine experts of them choose the option. Is only some state-owned companies demonstrate effective communication. Most did not. All others of 36, they uh, noted the effectiveness of communications must, of most state owned companies. Another question I put to the, in your opinion, did the information distributed by state owned companies provide citizens with clear advice and instructions on how to protect themselves? And they loved loved ones from the stress and problems caused by wartime conditions. That, as I say, that uh, their information was 
pivotal for, 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 for people. People relied on their information. For example, if I will not uh, send the information about evacuation train in time, so person might uh, appear in the, I don't know, in the center of the uh, grain field with, uh, with uh, valizas and, uh, and, and hearing that Russian troops are coming soon, yes? So our colleagues also favorably evaluate this, uh, this information. Only one respond respondent said, no, this information uh, didn't provide clear advice and instruction. And only one say more likely no than yes. So all others respondents were said definitely yes or more likely yes and no. All colleagues think that information was use, useful. Uh, that's about Kuzolis But of course, of course, we ha we had another state companies, and as I already mentioned, uh, we this uh, serious problem the supply, and it was a really uh, really hot topic, especially for the large cities, because in large cities it was uh, districts that were cut off the electricity for several several uh, days or a lot of hours at least. And we can say that uh, the electric companies they were also very successful in their communication. Some some electric companies were state owned, some of them were private privatized but again the, there are a lot of um, a lot of role of uh, government office on them because they were they had uh, some policy uh, like mo mon monopoly and uh, and regulation and so on so Sergei Kovalenko CEO of Yasna this is a provider of electricity in in city of Kiev the city of Kiev. That's why I know him personally because uh, I can witness by myself that this guy he communicated uh, with consumers uh, directly through Facebook. So it, my my opinion was that he was on the on the other uh, all around the clock twenty four slash seven. You know, see he answers. Uh, all questions from consumers directly. If he he can't, he ask his assistants to, to do this and so on. So uh, this is really really serious uh, serious how to say challenge for them. As he said, in no other way has there been such aggression against infrastructure facilities. So then he understands that. Uh, he realized that, that this gives him opportunity to start, you know, to explanation, like awareness raising campaign among consumers. So consumers uh, started to understand uh, from where, uh, from where energy burns. So what is generation of energy, how it, it is supplied to, to, to your house and so on. So, and he understand yes, creating uh, that he they wanted to to start uh, communicate through the call centers, through the um, social media managers, and blah blah blah. But then they understand that we decided to communicate with users directly. We can have a look on one short video. W w will you? Do you see it? Tell me. It's um, looks like it's loading, yeah. Huh? It's loading, but uh, I'm not getting any sound from it. Uh, uh, look, sound is a popular, it's a popular uh, melody for 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 people who are interested. I I I can send uh, send the link mm -hmm. uh, and the uh, how to say. Over voice is in Ukrainian, so it doesn't matter that you don't. Probably not all of you understand Ukrainian. I can I can uh, voice over in English. Yes. Mm -hmm. Did they think that winter would break us? 
did they think that we would starve to death in the dark? Ridiculously. Everything that doesn't kill us only makes us meaner. Do your own thing is not difficult when you know why. Go to work. Fix one upgrade. Standing on your feet all the day. Help a per person recover. Protect. We made it through this window. We'll make it through anything. So this motto, brave car is the light, was pretty popular. So under this motto, they tried to wait, wait, wait. So again. Um You hear me? Yeah. So this motto was very popular, and uh, and they show that uh, not only soldiers on on the how to say front line are uh, fighting for the independence for the country, but also these you know simple uh, workers who are fixing fixing these um, communications like uh, ele uh, electricity of the, after the airstrike, they also deserve the, the uh, attention of society. And, 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 they, and what that they are doing, uh, you know, what they could and they are doing their best. And what I actually should note that uh, even during this very long time shortage we didn't have any uh how say public or civil unrest uh, i don't know nobody came on the streets you you, you know ukraine in ukraine we, if if people are not satisfied they're they're starting the revolution you know we have a uh, maidan we had uh, in 2004 we had uh, orange revolution so people are not uh, so calm as in maybe in other countries you know if 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 people are not satisfied they they will um, show this is unsatisfaction but uh, explaining their deeds explaining what they are doing uh, assist um, these companies and assist the situation to prevent panic, to prevent chaos. So, I also ask our experts uh, to what extent, in your opinion, uh, uh, as the information provided to the public by state owned companies help citizens adapt to situation and problems caused by world conditions? Because it's not uh, as we know that there are two 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 sorts of information uh, company or organization might disseminate during the crisis times is like uh, instructional information and uh, of information which assist people to cope with the situation to adapt to adapt their lives their strategies to to the situation and uh, as you see. Nobody said that this information didn't assist to, to adapt to the situation. And uh, moreover, of 36, 10 experts even said that this information was very useful. All, all others think that is more assisted than, than not assisted. So some I would like to, to, to give you two, two, two quotes from our PR uh, colleagues, PR practitioners about communication on public companies. You know, thanks to the clear advice and instruction given by the companies during the war, they managed to greatly influence the general mood of the population and thus partially stop the panic in society. The company's instruction gave the public peace of mind and confidence. 
in the best. Optimist despite any threats. Practical recommendations that are easy to follow. Community unity in the face of threats. Oh, something like this. So in this regard, we can think about what basic principles of state-owned com companies they used in their communication during wartime. So first of all, we can say uh, they they managed to express empathy and support to, to, to community, support to every citizen, every, every member of community. Uh, of course, they disseminate a practical information, what to do, uh, what not to do, about evacuation, about different, for example, strategies to cope with uh, uh, shutdowns of energy and water, for example, everyone in you know, every family in Ukraine already have the um, generators or, or special power banks. I have, for example, in my, in, in my uh, household, I have uh, power banks, which my daughter bought me in Germany. We have uh, um, a different light, lightning in, in, in batteries. We had uh, mini gas, uh, like independent gas oven uh, to we we even cooked the 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 dishes there. What else what do we have? We have a uh, some water. How to say in in different uh, cans, uh, the just in case, and so on. Uh, of course, companies showed a clear and pro-Ukrainian like patriotic position. So like to show that they are, but like to show their that they are citizens of Ukraine. I mean, as a company, like corporate citizens of Ukraine, and and they also part of the resistance of Ukraine. And of course, a dissemination of information about uh, their activities in um, accessible and understandable language, like in plain language, which is very important. And again, this is a serious differences with, with their activities during, uh, I mean, in the previous period, I mean, before, before this great war, because, uh, you know, state-owned companies, they are pretty, communication of state-owned companies looked pretty similar to communication of government institutions. You know, it was pretty bureaucratic, not very clear, not very understandable, you know, especially for people without education, for example, and so on. And now they, the, the war, like, nudge them to this. <clears throat> and creativity, of course. So they use uh, motivational content. So they try to support their audience through, through different entertainment formats. I will show you some, some, some uh, using creativity to convey uh, important messages, for example, to raise funds for the armed forces, uh, for assistance to internally displaced people, for example. Uh, those are uh, three samples of, of uh, MEMS uh, in, in their communication. For example, on the left, you, you see, it was, it, and it is still very popular, in Ukraine now, uh, when you use, I, I'm sure that you have the same memes in, in your countries, where there are several photos from movies and, and with, with, with uh, uh, phrases um, according, like adapted to the specific situation, yes. So this, this one was done by Ukr Poshta, Ukrainian Post. Ukrainian Post had a uh, lawyer called Chizhikov, and he uh, he was a very small employer in in uh, the provincial uh, post station. He went as a volunteer to to Ukrainian army, and he managed to hit the very very uh, modern Russian aircraft with a very old fashioned uh, bazook. So this bazook was 
1970, uh, 1971, something like this, you know. So you, you can see this gentleman in, on, on the bottom of this uh, map. So as you see, the, the Evil, this is guy is called Loki, I think. Loki said that he has an army and uh, they have Ukurposta, Ukurposta, Ukurpost has uh, Chizikov who can hit everyone. In the center, again, Ukurpost, Ukurpost, uh, if you remember, there is a uh, story about uh, Russian, uh, Russian uh, military ship. Go fuck yourself. You know, you know this man probably, yes? So the story behind it that there is an island in, in the Black Sea, which was a forepost of, of Ukrainian uh, um, board guard. And Russians sent the, the ship and the chief commander uh, of that ship uh, uh, by radio told, made a statement to Ukrainians to I'd say, uh, to put put off the arms, and they asked, uh, they told them, go, like fuck and so on. So and after that, uh, the Ukur Ukur, uh, Ukur Ukur Posta Ukrainian Post, they issued the stamp. The stamp was extremely popular. What, what is interesting? They the the stamp was issued on twelfth of April. And on April 13, that uh, Russian flagman ship was uh, was sinked. You know what? That, that was very very interesting. And the last one is uh, uh, there is a man in in Ukraine. People like very much. Uh, it it calls good evening. We are from. So that was like a, when the. Ukrainian troops are going to deliberate in some occupied territories. They usually say that we are from Ukraine, but that's <clears throat> that's a mem. So every uh, people are, I would say, repeating it several times uh, by no means, you know, sometimes. So they did a special uh, private bank, it's a state, uh, uh, state card about. On private bank actually developed a large number of special cards, so you can come and um, and ask for this specialized card. You see, there is a uh, uh, dog patron. He he's anti mine mine dog. He he finds mine landmines and and, and and deactivate it. So he's one of the national heroes now. And this uh, pink. Issue is uh, the winner of uh, Eurovision, uh, so that's why he was he was very uh, very um, popular. So this uh, this is extremely such creative initiatives very popular with the public. Plus they have a special button where the people can. So in this time, it is very important to support people, to give them some hope that everything will be fine and so on. So a lot of different pictures, uh, as you may see on, on the, on the uh, top, this is a hand of Russian, uh, Russian uh, president shoulder. The, the hand is probably from Ukrainian servicemen. And the motto says, welcome to hell. Or um, another is a kind of uh, special postal stamps about the um, barriers of lights. It's dedicated to our energy sector. So uh, I asked, um, I asked uh, our colleagues, Pierre, uh, PR practitioners, 36 PR practitioners, with the following question. Do you agree with the following statement? In the face of full-scale war, 
most state-owned companies have improved communication with their target audiences compared to previous years. And if you see, 23rd of them agreed with the statement and only, only, only three my, of my respondents didn't uh, agree with, with the statement. All others agree. Or definitely, so you see the, 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 the blue, uh, the blue part of the pie. So those who agreed and the red who don't. Uh, the, and uh, orange is uh, partially. So if to, to make some conclusions. <clears throat> so we can say that in these months after February 22, most of public companies made a really serious, significant strides in enhancing their communication. Uh, we can say that war served as a catalyst for organization to bolster their communication strategies. And uh, we can say that the company started to think more about the publics. So they start to explore the real needs of the audience because they started to understand probably the responsibility of their communication. They, they started to, to treat communication not in the formal way, but uh, as a real resource and assistance to their, their um, publics. So recognizes the, their, the, their own critical role, they started to understand that uh, their communication should be well-balanced and effective. Uh, facing crisis conditions, many state-owned communication started started to make a uh, very fast decision. So they started to communicate promptly, which they didn't do before. And they started to employ efficient communication tools and play, uh, place more emphasis on the results of communication. Because so they started to treat communication as a something that should uh, give the results, give fruits, but not uh, as, a, as a process. So that's why companies are confronted with clear imperative to communicate effectively, particularly when people are in dire need of clarity and transparency. So I think this will uh, make a lot of implication on the development communication sector in Ukraine. Because um, to give you understanding, we always think that this sector, state-owned state companies, is not the, the most progressive uh, part of our communication sector. But uh, war really worked as a trigger. And uh, if they will continue their efforts, I, I, I'm absolutely sure we will see a lot of improvements in conditions in Ukraine. Meanwhile, Russian Federation uh, continues. This, this building was attacked with a rocket on June 24th. This, this building is located one block for, from, my, from my house and where I'm talking. Alas, I can't show it to you. You, you this from my window because my window looks on the west and this is on the east from my, from my building. This is photo of uh, cathedral by rocket last week. I'm, I finished my presentation. Maybe you have some questions or comments. I would, what, what I would like to say, by the way, uh, I'm, I'm very interested in, uh, I don't know, maybe your suggestions, maybe your, your ideas, how, you see me, you know, how, how to, 
finish my my presentation. Okay. Well, Dean, I think had his hand up first, and then Shima. Uh huh. Uh huh. I was actually applauding, but I will take the opportunity. Um, I enjoy this immensely. Um, one thing that um, uh, and probably the most heartbreaking uh, one was uh, in the site by the train where the children like looking confused and lost and like where are they go and everything. It was really kind of a very moving um, uh, art um, painting, or whatever it was. But um, um, I don't know my my sole experience again was some time ago in two thousand seven. But really, I was very impressed with the professional community there at the time, and they. Uh, they understood public relations very well. They understood uh, communication very well. And uh, uh, some of this, you know, I guess doesn't really surprise me, but I mean, this is really skillful. I still don't know, and we don't want to deviate here, uh, uh, but I still don't understand why Russia attacked Ukraine. I, I don't get it. I just don't understand that, but um, um, they did. And uh, um, I, uh, most of the what we have heard, or at least I have heard, uh, about the issue is more related to how Zelensky sold the, the their defense to the rest of the world, particularly the United States. I mean, uh, he's uh, and I don't dispute this, but I mean, he's a good guy. Putin's a bad guy. Uh, Ukrainians are in a defensive struggle for their homeland. Uh, Russia's the um, uh, aggressor, and that's all certainly true here. But um, but um, this internal uh, aiming at your own population, I, I just found this uh, really really interesting and um, something that I don't think we, uh, uh, at least I'm aware of, that we would normally hear. But we're for you making this presentation. So, like I said, it's a long way away of saying I really enjoyed this. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, of course, of, co of course, there, there are different uh, versions why he's, you know, before, before the invasion, we had this um, so-called one year or so period of, of waiting and discussing and, and everyone agreed that uh, it is absolutely senseless to, to invade Ukraine. Think, think his army, when, when they invaded, they had less than 200 uh, soldiers, only 200,000 soldiers. While now, uh, both sides have around millions each, you know, and uh, it is impossible to move, you know, like for, for, for example, five kilometers, it's already an achievement for, for both sides, you know. But he wanted to take, uh, well, it, 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 it was ridiculous that when uh, it was one uh, like military column and when Ukrainians took that column, they, they found that they didn't have enough ammunition, but they had, a, uh, you know, uh, the uh, special uniform for part, for military part. So they, they, they think that they will just bring to Kiev and Establish a parrot that we took the key for, for uh, Putin wanted to took key for three days. And that was absolutely impossible because the resistance was enormous. You know, the, the people now now in the army, we have a lot of civilians. We we the most people who are fighting now, they're civilians. We have already several uh, people who died among our professors. I have several young colleagues who, who went as a volunteers there and they already died on, on the front line. We have several students even who, who went. There is a, uh, how to say, there is a uh, special process that if you are a student, so, so the, you, you cannot be mobilized. But if you want like voluntary, so, so they, they were volunteers. So that so that's true. I, I agree. Yeah, maybe let's have another. Shima and then uh, Margalit. Uh, thank you so much uh, for this interesting research that you shared with us. It, it shows the key role of communication in war, and war communication is something that is not in um, discussed in in many textbooks. Um, 
so my question is um, the fact that um, key, um, key services uh, are offered by public companies in Ukraine, uh, did it help or, or does it help communication during war? Um, in other words, if these services were privatized by, by many um, you know, firms and corporations, small corporations, uh, could, could they still um, communicate um, as effectively as what uh, public companies are doing now? Yeah, exactly. Uh, this, this example about electricity suppliers. So electricity is generated by state-owned companies but uh, dissemination of it is, is done by, by, by private companies. But they are working very, very close now because uh, this is, uh, mm, for example, we had uh, issues about the fairness. For example, I uh, my, my building is cut and I see another block, which is like now, you know, lighting an island. What, uh, why, why, why it's so? So they needed to explain to me, they need to explain to me how, how energy is disseminated. So the, uh, it, it doesn't mean that if, if this uh, uh, building is located like, I don't know, a kilometer from me, it doesn't mean that we have the same line, you know? So the line is coming to me, but another line is coming to them. That's why sometimes we don't have uh, electricity in my house and they do, you know? But from the emotional point of view, it is, you feel that this is unfair, how come? I'm, it, it, remember, it, it was started in the late um, autumn and then it was came to the, to the December and even in January we had cutoffs. From, from February, situation not normalized. So if you, if you don't have electricity, if it is cold in your winter, you know your your brain started to 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 how to say to create some negative emotions. And uh, proper communication can assist you to cope it. When when you read and when you when when guy who is CEO of the company which is responsible for electricity can tell tell you exactly what what what's going on day by day hour by hour you wrote to him and he replied to you in 20 minutes i tried i, I was wondering will it work it will work he answered me after 20 minutes that's that's true now Ma margalit margalit um um first i want to thank you really i'm i'm amazed at the idea that you are uh, conducting research under these kind of conditions and why the building is, is destroyed next to you and you are going and collecting data and analyzing it. This is a huge, huge commitment to academia and uh, I really congratulate you for this. I want to ask you about, a, about from my own perspective, I, in Israel, you know, I grew up in war, so all my life I, I was in many, yes. many situations like this with no electricity and no different kind of wars. Uh, I mean, the fact that Russia invaded Ukraine is so outrageous and so unjust. There are no two positions around it. And I think that, I believe, I don't know, tell me, I believe that there is huge consensus in within Ukraine among the Ukrainian about uh, the justified uh, sacrifice that everybody is, is suffering um, because everybody is behind Zelensky in this, which also wasn't before the war. He wasn't in such a good position before the war, but now he became very, very popular because he, he stands out. And um, my experience with private companies and, and uh, state companies is that the company aligns with the uh, general mood of patriotism, of united we stand, of uh, here we are going to win against our enemies and it makes it more popular. And companies I saw witness, SAP, I also was involved in, in using the situation to increase the visibility of the company. And it wasn't just service 
it was much more than that. It is building a reputation during crisis, something like this, which might be a bit uh, self-centered. Now, I also had uh, thought when you were talking about the fact that actually PR comes from war. We, I mean, Bernay start and, and all the kill uh, committee, we all, our origins are in war propaganda. Mm -hmm. And I think that during war, communication becomes propaganda more than PR. It is much less building relationship. It is more a, a one-sided and kind of a participating in the general mood of, a, as I said, United We Stand. I saw it in America during the, the uh, 2001. So I um, wonder how, I, I didn't know much about the internal feelings in Ukraine. This is why I'm so amazed at the fact that you are able to conduct research and teach and, um, and I remember actually that we kept working and we were uh, conducting a, a, a normal life, but our words were not that long. This is lasting so long. How do you build resilience in these people? Do you use, do, does the government use communication to build resilience? I don't know. It seems to me like the whole story was so sudden. There was such a, an assumption that Russia would not invade and suddenly it invaded mm -hmm. and you didn't have time to build this kind of state of mind of people. But then the Ukrainian seems to be very resilient. How did it happen? Was it thanks to communication? So I'm sorry, I, 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 First, I mentioned yes, a yes, lot of yes, topics, yes, but yes, it yes, made yes, me, yes, it, yes, it was yes, really yes, many things. Yeah. Thought-provoking uh, presentation, uh, amazing. Thank you very much, Margaret. Yeah, that, that, uh, about your first remark, I, I would like to say that, uh, you know, I was lucky enough, uh, like for my not so long time uh, of my age, I was a witness of different uh, real serious uh, events of history of my country. I was uh, a journalist during the struggle for independence in 91. Mm -hmm. I was in 2004 during witnesses and participant of Orange Revolution. Then we had mm -hmm. Maidan Revolution in 2000. Mm -hmm. Now we have the war. And I told to my students that we are absolutely, well, you know, we, we had uh, some discussion several years ago. And I say, show me the, like materials about the Maidan revolution in 2014. What, what do we have? And we understood that we have nothing. And, the, and as I say, now we have the responsibility to document everything we have in this war. That's why I like, you know, I obliged my students to, mm -hmm. to make notes, to find these memes, to find these photos, because this is our obligation to, to, to our next generation. Because after 20 years, someone will come and say, uh, do you have uh, any materials about the war to 20 to 23? Hopefully. And we say, no, we forget. We, 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 we struggle for water supply and electricity. So as I say, why do you, why do you call you a scientist? Who, who, who's a, wh wh why are you staying there? You, you just use someone else's place, seat. This is not, not correct. So thank you very much. I absolutely agree about this how to say, uh, sample of Israel, because we here, we always say that, look at the Israel. So this tiny nation, very small, like, like minimal nation and huge Arab world around, host who wanted to just, how Golda Meir say, our enemies don't want us to exist. And we want to survive. There is no compromise in, in there. Yes, that exactly what we have here. Russian doesn't want us to exist. That Putin, in all his statements, say there is no Ukrainians, no country. All the countries uh, souvenirs from 
Lenin and from communists. So communists present it to you and we will take it back. So, and you know, and I'm not agreed to, to become a Russian. I don't want to be a Russian, sorry. And not only me, not only me, because if you see that uh, people were surprised, really, it's, uh, I agree with you that world was uh, surprised by this resistance. Because uh, if you remember just before this uh, invasion, uh, what what kind of supply was done by uh, by for example Brit British by Britons, they they supplied especially equipment for guerrilla war. Because they mm. think that if invasion will will be so Ukrainians will sit in mountains in the western very western Ukraine, and just make some you know some small guerrilla operations like like trains I don't know. Uh, vents and so on. So that's it. So, and they didn't give, for example, they didn't give us uh, what 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 was out of my presentation, for example. Um, but it's interesting. Uh, in the very beginning of the first airstrikes, so only seven uh, seven uh, percent of rockets and uh, air aircrafts and so on were hit by our. Uh, uh, anti anti air missiles only seven percent. For now, we managed to hit eighty south eighty three percent. Why? Because we received the uh, so supply from United States, Britain, and and France, and so on from Germany, of course, you know, and so on. So so uh, we had a campaign in the uh, April, April May last year. Uh, shelter, uh, sa save the heaven on, uh, on, on Ukraine. Maybe you, you even saw it. it. It was very popular, especially in Western countries. So children and the shelter, please close the, 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 the sky, close the sky. So uh, now we can say that moreover, Kiev is closed and maybe Kharkiv. But Odessa is not close. And you see that people are, um, are suffering and, and people are every day is dying. So, someone is dying and, and so because we, 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 we don't have enough of this. Uh, but uh, what, what gives people a hope, I don't know, a hope or, or a force to, to fight, to, 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 to continue it? I understand the, the war is extremely long, you know. Uh, but uh, but people, we we don't have any any other solution. You know, we definitely don't want to join Russian Federation. We see how people are living there, and it's absolutely not our uh, desire. You know, we we see that everyone who just voice up something, he he's in jail. Says what what's going on with uh, that guy in Navalny? Is is it's. it's it's, we, we can't explain it, for example. For example, a girl I, I, I saw in, in, in on television story, in Russian television, I saw a story about the girl who who draw the 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 drawing and and that's the, after that she was separated with her father and father who who tried to, to take her from the institution, uh, he was in jail, so in prison. That's, 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 you know, beyond any standards, that's absolutely impossible to understand. So, so we have no alternative. So maybe let's go to Rodney. Rodney wants to ask. Rodney? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rodney, please. Thank you so much for the informative presentation. Um, I just have a question. Um, you mentioned that the, um, the crisis also affected schools, and that includes higher education institutions. Um, I had a, a study, and I, I'm curious to know uh, how were they able to survive? I mean, what, what, mm -hmm. how do they communicate to continue to keep their focus ahead to complete mm -hmm. their mission, and that that's to educate. And I think mm -hmm. much of it, what you are doing. I just want to know how did the schools, higher education, mm -hmm. communicate uh, during those times? Thank you. Uh, at the very beginning of it, uh, most uh, 
secondary schools and, and university, of course, were uh, moved to, uh, to online mode. Then uh, from this uh, from this spring, the schools are open for, for, for children. But uh, according to the, the, there are some demands to the schools. For example, uh, those uh, cities and towns which are close to, to frontline, they're not uh, opened. Those which are in Kiev, for example, or in Odessa, they are open only under circumstances that they have enough sh sh uh, shelters. So, for example, if you have uh, uh, a bomb shelter, anti-bomb shelter in your school, so you can open it. Regarding universities, we still have only online uh, education. So since September, we will, uh, for example, our university, we will open the offline uh, lectures only for first year students. It was done by, you know, enormous pressure from, from students and their parents. They want students to, to meet, you know, to, to interact with other children, uh, with other students. So for the first year we open, we can't open for, for everyone because we don't have enough shelters, simply. So to, to, too many shelters we, 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 we do need for this. Uh, you know, we had several cases where the people who went to shelter not not in their own buildings, but to another buildings, and they were died just near the doors of the shelter. You no, know? they were hit by by bombs. Not by bombs, but the spars, 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 debris. So uh, that's what that, that is. It is. We, for example, our university, we managed to find some another solution with our partner universities. We uh, sent uh, some portion of our uh, students to other countries. So we have several several hundred students uh, now studying in Germany, in uh, in uh, Canada, in Britain, in Poland, of course, and in Czech Republic, in 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 different. In the United States, by the way, as well, we have so, so we have partner in university, uh, for example, to University of Toronto, and they took 150 students from our side. They're studying there. My 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 daughter is studying in Germany, for example, under this program. Thank you. We also have some families here, also students. So, and what 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 I would like to say that. Uh, uh, I will be very uh, uh, thankful for you, for example, if you will give me a, any ideas, any any suggestions, and uh, and I will be also it's very interested if if you want me to uh, talk to your students or or to your mm -hmm. colleagues, I, I'm absolutely open and, and very interested about it. So I think it's it's very important. Again, we, we maybe Margaret, we we can do a cross uh, study about Ukraine and Israel. How yeah, might be interesting. Yeah. But yeah. you know, I published a, actually a chapter in the hit. The, ooh, I think it was twenty ten or something like this. A handbook on public relations, uh, mm -hmm. and it's called the military spokesperson. And uh -huh. this is discussing PR during wartime, but from government PR, not the companies. Your approach is very interesting, very relevant, wonderful addition to this. So I think that also to put your, your research in the context of government communication, because that's also exactly that's exactly very interesting. Zelensky, you mentioned Zelensky. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm... Uh, and I absolutely agree with with your. Uh, I, I put, by the way, my my email if if someone wants to to give any proposals and, and contact uh, in the chat. Uh, Zelensky, it was a former comic actor, you know. Yeah. Uh, and 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 he was very funny, really. But he was like always like a young man. After invasion, he like matured in in, in days. You know, so, so, something had changed with him. He started 
to be a, like a, you know, his speeches. Uh, I say this is a level of Winston Churchill. Yeah. Some speeches I'm I'm reading, I'm crying really. It's 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 so cool, as especially from the professional point of view. When 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 you read it and you see you you see everything. It's like a you know like a details. Uh, metaphors uh, mm. very very cool so, so sp spokesperson of a war it's extremely interesting uh, so i published a, a chapter about it criticizing actually our the israeli military spokesperson for doing propaganda and not doing pr that's yes that's, we have we, 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 we have the same st uh, stuff here as well we have this is exactly it's, it's another topic and mm -hmm. it, it may be maybe worse to discuss it, of, of course. But because, maybe you, because maybe when, you can... uh, when when they trying to narrow all this communication stream, so they are they are taking out the truth, just doing yeah. like a, we 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 maybe call it uh, uh, throwing the caps into the enemies. We are we will win. Definitely, because we are good and they are bad. Yeah, and, yeah. It uh, is very simple. It is propaganda. And uh, uh, and it is uh, really interesting to look at. Maybe uh, Zelensky really he understands media. I saw his uh, comedy, the whole series. It is amazing. He is really a genius. And maybe his understanding of the media and communication inspired the communication teams in the, in the companies that you interviewed. Yes, Maybe yes. there was some I, I, connection there between how the country communicated and how the companies communicated because it is yes, uh, the, this is one uh, issue. And then what, uh, they look, look look at him, look at the how government communicated, and then understood that they should adhere to it. Exactly. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. We have another question. I see. I think Mira right? had her hand up. I think she's still here. No. Um, so, not so much a question, a, com a comment. Mm -hmm. and thank you for a very interesting um, uh, presentation. Again, I can't imagine what it's like collecting data in a conflict zone and working on research in a conflict zone. I think we get stressed even when we're working in a normal university. So kudos to you for that. Well, well, mo most of my data I collected through online. Don't, don't make a, a hero from myself. I, that's not so. That's I'm not under the bombs, you know, like collecting. But still, it's like existing in a conflict zone is stress in its own. But one of the things that I found very interesting was when you were looking at social media content of these mm -hmm. public companies. Um, I think that is a chapter or a paper on its own, because mm -hmm. the again. I would assume that for these public companies, social media is a main means of communicating. And then the efficacy of the visual grammar with which they're communicating. I think that's something that's worth studying in more in depth. Uh, I would say that there is a sub angle in there in terms of visual rhetoric as applied to this conflict communication. Mm -hmm. So I yeah, I, ab yeah, yeah, I absolutely that. agree with you that social media, first of all, it's uh, it was on the rise before this uh, the, the, uh, this invasion, and and people start to rely much more on, on social media, especially younger generations. Uh, for example, what what we can mention during the after starting of conflict. A, enormous race in uh, mm, telegrams uh, channels for example we have this uh, mm -hmm. i don't know do you have in your country this telegram because it's uh, it looks like this russian owned uh, but uh, it is like a quick quick uh, uh, like quick information uh, posts from uh, from everyone and so they are st starting groups and we have a lot of groups for example uh, to give you understanding they establish a group for our small very small di district about the, the lights for example every time they are switch off the light switch on the light they inform me by 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 smartphone. It's extremely useful, you know. For example, when when they switched on the uh, switch off the lights, we with my uh, wife we go for walking, 
And just when they switch on the wall, like, well, like we, we, are, we are living on 16th floor, it's a little bit difficult to, to, <laughs> to go up. Yes, we did, but, but, uh, but, but not every time. So, and we see, oh, we have the light, so we go back. For example, I made the, as I told you, that we, we do uh, online uh, lecturing in university. So if, if I don't have the lights, I don't have internet in my, in my house. So I am going to. I went to the trade center, uh, like uh, to the mall, to the mall to 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 make this translation. I sat in the in the in the mall and uh, and and speak with my students, make a lectures and so on. It was they already knew me. They say, "Oh, this is from university." Hello, uh, and one and once I came and started the this uh, exam. Uh, by online and then they, they started airstrikes and they closed even that so i went to the pub uh, and, I would say. and and i had the lecture from the pub it's very funny you know when <laughs> in the pub you can't uh, or be to you should buy one, at least one beer so i st stand with the beer and gave the lecture a well, dream. I would suggest I would suggest creating an assessment whereby your students evaluate the visual communication of the public companies, and that uh -huh. gives two angles: how are the youths responding to uh -huh. this form of communication, and also ideas on how to unpack that visual grammar. I would assume uh -huh. that for these companies to communicate with the younger demographic, that is a critical thing, right? So yes. the aspect of visual rhetoric and the aspect of younger demographics. Your project mm -hmm. is significant but it is it is vast but there are several sub dimensions in there there's a lot of data there's a lot of aspects so I yeah think I absolutely agree out, uh, uh, just yeah, finding yeah, out it, it's, one of yeah. Them. yeah it might be contribute yes because yeah. of course professionals they have their own how to say uh they they have their own understanding sometimes they, their eye is not so clear because you think how I would do this, and and this might might change. Uh, the, well, I don't know how nineteen year old Ukrainian students are, but Australian students are very blunt. So a nineteen year old will have no hesitation in critiquing the outcome. Exactly. Of the exactly. <laughs> so yeah. just ask them. The, yeah. Yes, they are like this everywhere. Yes. Thank you very much. For very good suggestions, Amira. We used to have class in the pubs when I was <laughs> when I taught graduate classes years ago, but not anymore. Uh, uh, okay, I, so great, great talk. So, so I, 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 I left my my email address and will be glad if someone will write to me and and some, suggest something. Maybe, maybe again. If 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 you somehow will have some many discussions about these topics, I will be glad to, to join. Yeah, I, I, can, I send you an email. I think there's a bunch of things you can think about that you've already mentioned. You know, like in the U.S., we have like electric companies and banks. I was thinking that we have we have essentially um, a credit union, which is. Mm -hmm owned by the members, which is sort of a public institution, so to speak, versus a bank. And banks are very unresponsive and have, you know, poor interest rates and don't really care usually. And credit unions are usually much more responsive and communicate better. And we have, yeah, we have credit unions as well. Yeah. yeah, we have the same thing with electric companies where you'll have a um, a rural electrical association in some places that's very responsive and tries to help people understand things and communicates with them versus the, you know, the big electric company that's corporately owned that doesn't do any of that. So, you know, some of this too might be interesting to look at the way these communication patterns have, you know, adapted by these different, you know, sectors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know, and I find so sad here, um, if I may hear, um, I was holding up a forum, a quite excellent book, so off topic now about World War One. Mm. I'm sorry, World War Two, but I find so sad. I was just doing a little bit of math in my head. Um, the students, the wonderful students I met in 2007, Kiev, they, you know, that 
there's, there's such good kids, but then I say the same thing uh, many times I've been in Russia. I know the last time, I guess it's 2016. And just the thought of these kids, both sets wonderful, fighting one another and killing one another and everything is just a, uh, and being essentially, well, the Ukrainians are defending themselves, but I mean, the Russians, like, you know, I, I don't think these kids are causing the war or they're not, you know, kids. But you know what I'm saying is that they're just very evil people who are leading or causing all these horrible, you know, this horrible death and destruction and very good people are caught in the middle of it. I just, let's see, I don't know that. I'm not sure there's a point here what I'm making or, or uh, any admonishment. It's just, I just find it very sad. Indeed. Okay. Anyone else? I think last chance. Um, can I have one, the last question? Can I ask the last yeah, question? Please. Uh, you, in the presentation, you mentioned that there was more focus on um, communication results rather than communication processes. Do you think um, traditional um, communication processes that we are teaching in our classes, like developing a strategic communications plan that needs research, does not apply um, to wartime? Do they have time to develop a communication strategy or mm, they mostly uh, follow like an agile process in short cycles in a trial and error process? Shima, maybe I, I was uh, put it like too, too general. M meaning when I say that uh, rather than process, the, then the communication as a process with, without of course, Of course, putting up the strategy like normal mm -hmm. strategy requires the normal uh, indicators of success of the strategy. So, so I I didn't mean that uh, they they shouldn't do the, the communication strategy or like all this stuff research uh, and defining the target audiences. Of course, they they should. But before that, as I as I told, for example, about Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian railways, as I made, so they didn't have the strategy. And when I say process, meaning that they are doing, for example, just number of posts in Facebook or just a number of press releases. Hmm. Nobody cared, um, for example, how many journalists use hmm. this press release. For example, I had the con uh, conversation with was one journalist. Uh, he was from a business newspaper and he said, look, I'm interested only on the information about shares, share capitals, uh, uh, such kind of like boards, all this stuff, you know, like financial issues. I'm not interested that they open the rail railway station somewhere in the middle of Ukraine. Mm -hmm. That's not my business. But they are sending me everything. And every, every day I am opening two or three messages from them. And then I should filter what is interesting, what, what is of my, from other side, he cannot not to receive information from them because he needs some of them information, but he needs like 5% of the information. <laughs> but those people in communication departments, they didn't care because they, they were most, mostly interested about their bosses, but not the result. Mm -hmm. that, that that's what I meant. Uh, Thank you, guys, guys. I'm very sorry. In five minutes, I I have the uh, presentation to to veterans. Mm -hmm. I I was invited by veterans of the war. They mm -hmm. want to, they they are establishing their own civil society organization, and they want to hear about crisis communication. Yeah. So, you must give yeah. them our wishes. Our our, yeah, yeah, our... yeah. Today is a great day for me, really, because I, I absolutely, I, I'm very thankful to Michael that he invited to me. For me, it's a, a real honor to 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 talk with you and to have a presentation with Dean, for example, whom I re read your articles and and texts before when I was much younger. Uh, so. <laughs> Yes, and 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 Michael and and others and others. So so it and and toward our next meeting on August. Yes, right. we will. Will we have? Okay. 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Yeah. Have a good afternoon. Talk to you later. Goodbye. Bye.